So I had to sing once called a song called I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen, which is a very, it was a very, it's a very famous song. I think it was sung by tenor, Irish tenor, Joseph Locke. I've heard uh, of him, yes. He's yeah, so he used to sing this song. And I was asked to sing it because the lady who passed away was called Kathleen. Hmm. And the family were all there. And it kind of got to the moment where everyone was waiting for me to stand up and sing this song. And it was very emotional to be singing this song to somebody who I didn't know. Called... It's the On Stage Podcast with Chris Rubbert. Welcome to another podcast. Uh, we have a special guest, a tenor by the name of Ralph Barnes. And um, okay, everyone, uh, we're going to introduce Ralph Barnes. Hello, Ralph. Hello, Chris. Greetings from the UK. Yes. How fantastic to be on the uh, Onstage podcast. This is um, a real honor. Thank you so much for inviting me. You are so welcome, my friend. I'm actually very happy. So we're going to ask you, can you give us a little bit of your backstory? What was the role of music in the early years of your life when you decided, I want to be a singer? <laughs> well, um, I live in the Cotswolds, uh, which is a beautiful part of the uh, the UK. I don't know if you know the Cotswolds, um, but uh, it's. I, I, I'm just very fortunate to be brought up in some beautiful, beautiful um, countryside. Uh, I mean, that's inspiration enough. I mean, when you walk out uh, of the um, of the house, if I walk out at the back of my house now, I see hills, I see trees, I see um, birds singing. You know. Um, Beautiful, beautiful pastures and meadows, and very, very fortunate, I think, to be uh, to be living in the Cotswolds. Um, so, yeah, I mean, where do you want me to start? I mean, when I when I was at school and uh, how I sort of got into music uh, from a very early age. I've been performing from I don't know the age of three. I think it was when I I think it was um, I think it was a school production. Where I play, sang the wheels on the bus. Um, and I was the bus driver and I had the big solo, you know. Uh, so, you know, if that isn't, a, isn't an incentive uh, to uh, to sort of do do performing, I don't know what is really. Um, but I found when I was at um, school, Chris, is that I was quite shy. And I don't know if you find this with other artists you've interviewed, but I was very shy in the classroom. I didn't actually say a lot. Um, but when it comes to like stage productions, and I, I used to do a, a musical every year, I just seemed to land the lead role every single time. So if we were doing Aladdin, I would be Aladdin. If we were doing Jack and the Beanstalk, I would be Jack. Wow. And this was a great way to boost my confidence. Because um, everyone used to say, oh, Ralph, he doesn't say very much, does he? He's quite quiet. And then when they used to, um, people used to come and see me on stage when I was about eight, nine or ten, he used to say, crikey, we didn't know Ralph was was like that. <laughs> we didn't know he could do that. We didn't know he could sing. We didn't know he could act. We didn't know he could dance. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I suppose I've, it's just like um, I haven't had a great deal of training. I think it's kind of a natural a natural talent, I suppose, if you know, if you would call that um, something I've always enjoyed doing. Um, I've never been a strong academic, really. Um, I've always enjoyed performing. I've always um, enjoyed working with people. Uh, and uh, I'm just really very fortunate, really, to be doing what I'm doing. Um, but uh, uh, I went to a very good uh, college in Gloucestershire. Uh, it was a boarding school, actually. It was called um, Rankin College. And um, we used to put on... Again, a musical every year. Uh, yeah, I was in plays. You know, I, I would I would be in the college choir doing little solos every Sunday. Um, you know, so uh, again, a great a great chance to do to do what I love doing. Um, and then, of course, um, going on to university, I wanted to uh, study, uh, keep studying and doing uh, the drama and the theatre and the music, although I thought there's probably not going to be a job in this at the end of it, unless I probably do teaching or something like that. Um, and 
I always thought about, you know, perhaps I should do a business studies career or I should do something that's going to give me um, a, um, a full time career. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I just I just loved performing and I kept doing it. Uh, and so when I actually got to uh, go to London, so I went to London for three years and I studied with a lot of people. I had a, an excellent uh, tenor. Uh, so he was called Michael Goldthorpe. And he sung many roles at Covent Garden. And the first time he heard me, he said, hmm, he said, um, I think we could do something with you. <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to say, huh? And he said, um, what are your aspirations? And I would say, I don't know, really. I said, I just love singing. And he said, right. He said, well, we'll start with Handel's Messiah and go from there. What? <laughs> wow. Amazing. So, um, yeah, so I've got to, you know, I've performed Handel's Messiah and I've performed all sorts of things, Haydn's Creation, um, Mozart's Requiem, all the big choral works, you know. So I've done, I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of solo tenor work. Um, I was doing that all through my twenties, just um, doing anything and everything I could really, just to, you know, just to get by. Um, this is what you do. <laughs> and then someone said to me, "Hmm, have you thought of recording yourself at all?" And I thought. No, not really. I, I don't know really how to go about doing that. Um, so I didn't actually record my first album until when I was about 28. So, yeah, um, I, I think it's it's definitely much a work, um, a working process um, because um, you are constantly on the go. You are constantly performing. You're constantly looking for work. And um, you have to keep yourself busy. Uh, and there's always lots of other people who also are looking for work too. So sometimes it's a case of who you know, not what you know. Yeah. And I found that throughout my life, I've, I've got to know so many people and they've given me so many opportunities to perform with them. And um, I've kept that, I've kept those friendships and um, which is, which has been fantastic because you know, you just have to keep working. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, tell us about what else Cheltenham is like. I didn't realize oh, you were so oh, young. Yes. Yeah, Cheltenham. So uh, Chel Cheltenham is where I live. So I was brought up in Cheltenham um, and uh, I've done many things in Cheltenham. So the Everyman Theatre, I've performed there many, many times. Um, there's also a number of other little theatres in around Cheltenham. So you've got the Playhouse Theatre, you've got the Bacon Theatre. Um, you've got, um, uh, then if you sort of head out, so you've got, um, Malvern, uh, so I performed there and I performed, I performed, um, in lots and lots of places in Gloucestershire. I mean, many, many churches and village halls and things like that. Um, so it was great performing in London, but I felt I was, um, I was very much, a, very much a tiny fish, you know, um, in a massive pond. Um, so here, here in Cheltenham and here in Gloucestershire, I find I do get more opportunities to do, to do things. So to, to do more concerts outdoors, um, to sing for lots of local charities. Uh, so pre predominantly my work has been here, but then I've, I have traveled around the country. I've done, I've done quite a lot of work abroad as well. So I've sung in France, Spain, Germany, Italy, America. France. Um, wow. Yes. Yes. Um, I've actually sung on um, Val d'Isère. I don't know if you know Val d'Isère, um, but it's a very high mountain range in um, uh, southern France. And to sing uh, to sing there was fantastic. Amazing views. Um, and also if you uh, go to Bavaria in southern Germany, uh, they got some beautiful places there. So the, Weitz, the Weitzenkeller uh, was a town hall which I was asked to perform in. And I just walked on stage and there were like 700 people there. 700 wow and i just kind of froze and then i oh, just sang mean... where are you and then i just composed myself and just sang uh, uh an aria by handel called where are you walk i don't know if you know it and um i'm not too 
I, no, I'm not too it's familiar a, with that one. It's a lovely, lovely tenor aria. Definitely check it out. Um, and I sang this, and it went very quiet after I'd sung it. And then suddenly they just went, Wah! And <laughs> crowds cheering. <sighs> it was, it was, it, it was, it was fantastic. And then um, there was a young girl that came that came on stage, and um, we did uh, tonight from West Side Story the duet. And uh, we'd only rehearsed it uh, a couple of hours before the concert because uh, I was asked to basically just learn this piece very, very quickly. Um, and that went down well, too. Um, also, I remember I went to um, Ardingly in West Sussex, and uh, that's sort of a place where it's uh, uh, they, they train people to become opera singers. So I was doing this in my early 20s. Wow. And when I got there, they said, um, have you learned the role of La Danquer? And I went, sorry? Le Danquer in Carmen. You're playing Le Danquer in Carmen. Have you learnt it? And I said, I don't think I have, actually. <laughs> I don't think I was told about this. Oh, um, well, we'd like you to do the whole of Act Two in French, and we're doing it tomorrow night. Do you think you could learn it in time? <laughs> and I said, I'll give it my best shot. So I was basically up the whole night learning this role. And when I went on stage the following evening, I um, I don't think anyone was none the wiser because I managed to get through it. <laughs> wow, you sort of did the same thing I did once when I, um, you, you just had to fake it through. Well, but... I, I, that's really interesting because one thing I was taught is even if you think that your performance hasn't gone exactly according to plan, you must always accept the applause and don't give anything away. So even if there's something in the back of your mind thinking that didn't go too well, don't show it. Just accept the applause because 99 times out of 100, somebody won't have noticed. Sort of like everyone has this sort of like... Yeah, because yeah, what you're doing is you're learning a poem. So yeah. you're learning a poem that's set to music. So the first thing I do is learn the poem and then read it as a poem and then put the music, learn learn the music and then try to do the phrasing the dynamics and um you know all those things that go with that go with singing um but learn the words first learn the poem and then really understand it you know what am i singing about and then i think it's a much easier process have you heard this song make me a channel mm. of your peace yes yes it was originally that... sung by alid when he was young yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a that's a lovely hymn, isn't it? And um, I do uh, have a Christian background. I've sung that uh, many times, um, notably at my uh, local church where I live. So we have a church here. And uh, I, again, that was a great place to perform when I was very small. So I got the chance to do a lot of singing there. Um, so, yeah, I love I love hymns. Yeah. Beautiful. Lovely hymn, that one. Yeah, that's something I used to belong to a um, a church that was part of a men's group, and um, we were called Gentlemen of Song, and we went around, we sang hymns from a hymn book. So I kind of missed that group because uh, after my relationship broke down, I stopped going to that church because she was attending. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, now I don't have any group, anything to fall back on. I got to the point I didn't know what to do. And then suddenly later on, I looked at my iPhone and it gave me this little app called Small Sing App. It allows you to sing with people around the world. Other regular people from China, from England, from Australia. We, we came up with a group and we talked about Handel's Messiah. Every year I started singing Handel's Messiah and I'd end up with between 28 and 30 people joining. And yeah. I would start a hallelujah. It would, it would give you like the lyrics would say, if you're tenor, it'll say tenor. And yeah. if it's for soprano or it's for an alto, it would say TSA. If it didn't yeah. say SA, then you know that the sopranos and the altos don't sing that part, but the, but the tenors do. So you sing anything with a T. So I was singing a few lines with the A. And a lot of sopranos and a lot of the altos and mezzo-sopranos with MS would show up. And it ended up being a beautiful rendition of Handel's Messiah. You can't screw it up. You can't ruin it. 
Yeah, and uh, it's probably one of the most popular things that you'll be asked to sing is the turn of soloist. Uh, that's in the Mozart Requiem. Um, yeah, so, and they're both beautiful pieces of music and they're just a joy to sing, especially with the full orchestra behind you as well. So, yeah, tell us more about, uh, so what was your favorite place to sing? Was it uh, America, Spain, Germany, Italy, or France? Well, um, when I went to Italy, I was very privileged to go and sing on the island of Elba. Uh, so I think that's where Napoleon was, was he banished there, I think? Uh, or he lived there. He lived there for quite a time. So I get um, so so his house is there. So Napoleon's house is quite an interesting place to visit. Um, and I was uh, performing Gilbert and Sullivan. I don't know if you know the Gilbert and Sullivan operas. I know Gilbert and Sullivan operas, but I couldn't yeah. tell you for life of me. One. So I was doing a, I was doing the gondoliers, and okay. um, I got to sing on the uh, piazza, which is. Um, beautiful terrace where people are uh, 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 sitting at tables uh, with candle lights, candlelight and glasses of red and white wine. And they're also looking down at you from the windows. So you're like performing in a street. Um, and I was singing, take a pair of sparkling eyes. Da, 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 da. Beautiful. <laughs> and it was just fantastic to be performing this song in Italy where it should be sung. <laughs> yeah oh, wow um, you probably sing for your for your there was a, as well. there's a point where it goes up very high at the end um yeah. act upon it if you can nice. and, I just held it and i went happy man if you can and they all went Way! That's amazing. I don't know why you just don't get together with Tyrone Piper and form a group. You sound just like yeah. I think you'd go well with him. He's, he's... I think I think that is the wonderful thing about performing live. You just don't know what's going to happen, and the reaction you get from people is incredible. Um, and of course, they love the gondoliers because it is an Italian. It's opera. It's not written in. Well, it, it does have some. Does some have have Italian language in it but it's predominantly english but it's an english opera but it's set in italy and they just loved it it was the perfect thing to sing to them i couldn't have sung anything more perfect it's <laughs> perfect all right with a voice like yours why don't um do you still feel nervous a certain amount of people watching is there a certain um, amount of people what just makes you more nervous uh, well i yeah, I, I suppose I get more nervous when I do competitions. So uh, if I'm doing singing competitions, which I try and do, because then you're you're being judged, aren't you? You're being judged by somebody and they're going to criticise you to quite an extent. They're going to take you apart, um, but you are going to learn a lot from the process. Um, so I think that's quite daunting. And even when you've only got sort of a, a small group of people who are watching you, they 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 are the competitors so you're kind of performing to your rivals in a way um but uh, you always you always learn uh, from these things so i've done a lot of those i've done a lot of singing competitions and um i have i have done very well i've been very successful at them but those times i get more nervous than i would do if i was performing in a um in a concert, say, in a church or a cathedral or in a town hall. Those singing competitions, did you ever get accolades for them? Uh, yes, I have. So I've uh, so I've taken part in um, quite a number of them. Cheltenham, Hereford, Bath, Oxford, um, yeah, Worcester, Malvern. So there's, yeah, there's a lot I've taken part in. Um, and uh, I have, I have, I have won uh, many, many cups and, awards for that um and i've met many many people and have made great friendships through that as well so and it's also it's been good to meet the um meet the judges uh, the adjudicators because they're normally uh, people who've been in the profession for years uh they're also solo professionals uh, they know exactly what they're talking about so they can give you lots of advice as to what to do so i would say it's definitely worth doing um, but it's a lot of hard work and be prepared um, for when it doesn't go quite so right. But when it does go right, it's very, very rewarding. I can see how they would, you would need educators and, and they would say, mm -hmm. um, 
Well, you know, Ralph, I think your voice, you need to just show a little bit more stamina mm. and yeah. give you a little bit more like oomph. You like Simon Cowell. Well, you know, <laughs> Ralph, you're just, you're just not strong enough to be part of this competition. Yeah. I yeah. have to give you a no. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, I have been on the X Factor. It was um, not very um, a pleasant experience, I have to say. Oh, wow. You and others, I heard. Mm, yeah, I didn't really enjoy it. So I didn't actually get the chance to see the judges uh, because I was sort of, I didn't get through to that to that stage, unfortunately. That's too bad because if I had mm. a, a program like that, I'd definitely give you a big fat yes to Simon. <laughs> yes, but the, it's a bit of a lottery, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. But I, I think sometimes I think you have to do it yourself. And I think if you stay true to yourself and if you work hard, um, then things will happen. So don't just think that's the be on end or if you don't get on a talent show, because that isn't. Because if you know you've got talent, then you must keep at it. And so that's what I've tried to do. So, yes, I've been on. I've done talent shows for the BBC and haven't have, I've, I've done OK, but I've never sort of got to the last the last final stages, as it were, of these competitions. Um, but I've had a go. And um, I think you you have to keep trying. You have to do whatever you can. But above all, you have to keep enjoying what you do because if you don't enjoy it, um, then it's going to it's going to become um, a bit of a chore rather than than uh, you know you're going to fall out of, you're you're going to fall out of love with it. You see, so yep. I've never done that, and I have had to pick myself up, um, as the old saying goes, and. Brush, brush myself down, start all over again many times. But I think that you, from the knocks, because you will get a lot of knocks, you'll get a lot of people saying, no, no, we don't want you. You're not right for that part. No, we don't, no. Then one day you'll get a yes. And I can tell you that um, four years ago, I auditioned for the role of Freddie Einsford Hill in My Fair Lady. And there were a lot of people going for this role. And I was so nervous. I was I was so nervous. I thought, I hope I'm I hope I'm gonna be okay. I just really hope I'm gonna be okay. And I sang the song and I came out thinking, I don't know whether that was okay or not. I think I could have done better. Uh but then uh to be sort of called the next day saying, Ralph, you're the perfect Freddie. Um wow. we'd love you to play the role. It's like, wow. <laughs> Because I hadn't, I, you know, I, I'd had a lot of people saying, no, no, we don't, you're not ready for this part. Um, we don't think your voice is right for this. And then suddenly someone says, yes, we want you. You're great. Yeah, wow, that's, uh, that's quite an accolade itself, being mm -hmm. chosen for a part you had no idea yeah. that you were even right for. And it's the most fabulous musical to be in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. And people uh, were saying to me, people in the show, Oh, you're so lucky! You you've got to, you you've got to um, you've got the best song in the show, uh, on the street where you live. Um, you're so lucky to be able to sing that. You have a whole stage to yourself, and to sing that to a an audience of seven hundred and fifty every night. So, who played? Um, who was the actress that played the main um, part? Oh, uh, her name was Hannah Bennett. She was very good. And um, uh, Paul Scott, who's also a very good uh, actor, uh, stroke singer, played Henry Higgins. And, yeah, I uh, like that character, Henry. They Henry were excellent. Higgins. Yeah. Henry Higgins. Yeah. And I had to, I had to share my dressing room with Paul, and he was very, he was on like bottles of Lucas Aid and, um, you know, energy sweets uh, throughout the whole of the performance. And he would rush in and rush out again because he was virtually on stage the whole time. Wow. And I think uh, after I'd sung my song one night, he came and he went, very good, Ralph. You're doing very well. And then he'd rush out again. <laughs> Who were your understudies in case you were ill? Um, were they the second runner up they chose? Yeah, they, yes. Yeah, there was somebody. But thankfully, I, I was, I was very well for the whole of the run. So, oh, that's. Um, I feel yeah. bad for the understudies because yeah. they can be an understudy and never get a chance mm. to go. And I'm like, yeah. I feel so bad for them because mm. it's terrible because I think there were some understudies out there that they never even were able to go on because the actor, actress is always on stage. They never faltered. And then one day 
they didn't show up in the understudy was able to take their place and they ended up being better than them. And they went on to bigger yeah. things. And I'm like, oh, wow. What a yeah, thing. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I know, I think I was reading uh, about David Jason the other day about him. He, he was an understudy to somebody in a play. And then somebody, uh, this guy was taken ill and he got his opportunity and he absolutely shone. Um, and of course, we've all heard of David Jason. Um, wow. you know, one of the most famous actors to have come from the UK. So, yeah, if you get an opportunity, you must take it because you just never know where that could lead. That's inspirational, Ralph. I think I'll I think I'll take that because I know I missed many opportunities. Instead of saying no, I should have said yes. Um, yeah, well, I th you know, you just have to, but you, you have to be true to yourself and not take on too much. You know, if you can handle a, a, a role, uh, a big role then do it and I've done that but sometimes I've had to turn roles down because I feel I'm not ready um, and I think I think that's important too to know well, when to I, say no as well yeah no is a big word it's sort of like what if you say no and you find out oh, 20 mm -hmm. years from now oh, no I yeah that. Because look where he <laughs> is now you know mm. um, so tell me more about uh, St. Albans Cathedral in Barcelona. There's a song called Barcelona, actually. That's good. Oh, there is. Barcelona with Russell Watson. Russell Watson. Russell Watson, yes. Yes, I've seen Russell live. He's fantastic. And uh, I've met yeah. Alfie Bowe as well. Uh, he's uh, another great tenor. Yeah. Um, St. Albans, uh, sorry, uh, St. Albans Cathedral, did you say? Yes, yeah, so that was Dream of Garontius. That was um, Elgar, another fantastic uh, piece of music. Uh, and Barcelona, yes, I sung in, um, I sung in the, the main square in Barcelona. And um, uh, so I was part of a choral society in London. So uh, the Barnet Choral Society at the time, I was about 20, I think. Um, and I got to go and perform over there. And again, the Spanish uh, people are lovely. And they just, they just thoroughly enjoyed what we sang for them. We did a mixture of all sorts of things, really, English songs, but Spanish as well, um, you know, just to fit in with the um, environment, as it were. Um, but, yeah, Barcelona is a lovely place, beautiful. Yeah, um, that's a great song, Barcelona, a beautiful song. I love it. It is. I wanna... I, I've thought of singing it, but it's um, – uh, I haven't got quite – I haven't found the right backing track yet sometimes. I think sometimes you have to get the – it has to be a very good backing track. Some of these backing tracks aren't. Some are good, but some of them are not quite so good, let's say. <laughs> Do you have a Mount Everest song? Like mine is Nessun Dorma. Ah, uh, Nessun Dorma. So, yes, when you're a tenor, everybody says, can you sing Nessun Dorma? Can you sing Nessun Dorma? Um, I can. I have sung it. Um, it's uh, something that I don't sing very often. Um, it is a very difficult song to sing, um, especially with that top note, which is a top B. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yes, I have sung it a few times. It, it, it is a crowd pleaser, um, but it is it is very demanding on the voice. Extremely demanding, I have to say. So that would be also your Mount Everest song then? My oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a tour de force. Lesson to Which reach it together, my friend. We'll sing a duet one day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. The Mount Everest singers. Nessun <laughs> 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 Dorma. And you come out and you go, Nessun Dorma. Very good. Yeah. 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 I'm learning that song because if, in case I'm asked that, can you sing Nessun Dorma? I said, yes, I can. I've reached Mount Everest. I plant the, the flag right on the top. Let's do it. You know? It's a, it has some beautiful words to it. I mean, when you've got the Tu puria principessa nella wow. tua fredda stanza. <laughs> wow. Quale di le stelle che tremano d'amore e di speranza. That's awesome, my friend. Wow. We should really definitely do a duet there. Um, <laughs> who are the Capella singers? I never heard of them. Capella singers. So that was um, that was a, a choir that I sang uh, with again in my early twenties. Um, so I was kind of learning to sing a cappella, which is without accompaniment. And uh, so this choir did everything without accompaniment. So we just had to pitch pitch our notes, and off we went. Um, and we got to sing in some again some beautiful places, lovely abbeys and cathedrals 
Um, so we sung a lot of religious things, so masses, choral works, um, English music. Um, very good, um, very good grounding for me um, uh, because uh, you know I think it's very good for to learn how to um, learn how to sing properly. And what, when you're singing this religious music, this choral music, it does help you think about how to sing properly as a uh, you know to, to learn to sing from the diaphragm and not from the throat and things like this so it's it, I, I i think it's very good to um to have been brought up on that music even though perhaps i don't sing in choirs anymore uh because i'm a full-time soloist but i will never ever forget my um my grounding in singing in i've sung in about seven church choirs in my time and that's been fantastic um yeah that's great. I love singing in churches, and I really trying to think: should I get a vocal group together? Should it be a Christian <laughs> vocal group, or just a vocal group, or just be a soloist? But um, I yeah, guess sound... yeah, because in choirs you have to learn to blend, and so it's a different from singing as as a soloist. So you, even if you feel you've got a, a strong voice, you must blend with everybody else, um, and that's quite difficult at times. What's your vocal range? My, my, I was told mine is a low baritone to a mid range to a falsetto. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I suppose I have got quite a big range. So I, I'm, I've sung a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber, Phantom of the Opera, and there's bottom A flats there. And then you have to sing a top A flat. So, you know, that's kind of two octaves, as it were, you know. Um, yeah. So, uh, but I've sung, I say, I've done, I've done a top D flat. So I sang a piece by Rossini, uh, I think it was called uh, Cu uh, Cuius Animam, I think, uh, and it just went, oh, 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 and it just went really high. <laughs> nice. Oh, and, and you just broke. had to go, for, you know, you just had to go for that note. The screen um, of my laptop broke, Ralph. Thanks a yeah, lot. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it was a terrible sound, um, and it probably was when I did it. Uh, it's fine. But I like that. The rest of the song was fine, um, but that's probably the highest note I've sung. Uh, well, I've squawked, I suppose. Who, um, you s said you worked with some of the country's leading musicians, such as Wynn Evans. Whoa. Yeah, Wynn Evans. Jane so... Gilchrist, Gareth Malone, late Sir Neville Mariner. Yes. Which ones did you like? Who were more personable? Well, I, I think the to have the opportunity of working with Sir Neville Mariner, um, who has been in the musical world for as long as I can remember. I, I, I grew up listening to his recordings with Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. Um, and to have the opportunity to perform uh, Mozart's Requiem under him as the tenor soloist um, was one of the greatest, uh, achieve, uh, you know, the greatest days of my life. Um, uh, and what was so lovely is that I got to go to his house and meet his family as well. Uh, and it was it was just a wonderful day, and I can remember uh, the concert when he was coming onto the stage, and he, I think he was he was in his probably um, mid eighties, and uh, he looked at me, and I was standing next to the podium, and he looked at me, and said, "Ralph, you couldn't give me a hand onto the rostrum, could you?" <laughs> and I had to help him up onto the rostrum. He said, wow. "Thank you, dear boy." Right, we'll we'll begin. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> such honor! Yeah, wow. I know, you know, and then of course to perform perform with him, you know, it was it was fantastic, and I think that the other soloists who were with me on that day were just they were just so honoured to have been asked as well. Um, you know, it was it was wonderful to be asked to do it, um, because uh, uh, you know you don't often get the chance to perform with somebody like that. Who was your? Um, have you ever met? Besides Neville Mariner and all these others, that's Josh Groban. Maybe you ever met Josh Groban? No, I've never met Josh. No, I'd love to. Uh, I love his. I love his voice. Um, I do a, co a couple of covers of his. Um, you raise me up. Um, mm -hmm. February song, things like this. Um, but uh, so Gareth Malone. Um, I think you may have heard of him in Canada. Gareth Malone, famous conductor, choral conductor. Well, nope. he is here in the UK. Okay. Uh, so he conducts many, many choirs, uh, community choirs, gospel choirs, military wives choirs. Um, Wynne Evans, who um, 
is a tenor for Welsh National Opera, but he's more he's more known for his um, for the adverts over here. So he does um, I think it's for um, go go compare, and he's the go compare tenor. So he comes he comes onto the uh, TV screen and says go compare go compare, um, and Wynne's a very good friend of mine. Um, I could tell you some very funny stories about Wynne Evans. He's 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 a, he's a comic. He he he's he's a stand up as well as a great singer. He is so funny. If you had him for an interview on here, you would be laughing every single second. I tell you because well maybe it's... you can maybe you can mention <laughs> on stage and get him on here. Definitely. He's it's just every line is a quip. So I'll just give an example of Wynne. So I was doing a concert with him in Bristol. And we had about uh, 700 guys, uh, male voice singers, on the stage. And he comes on and he says, oh, he said, I didn't know I was going to be performing with Dad's Army. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 then, <laughs> and, then, and then he says to the audience, he says, he says, I just got to have a chat with them. Is that OK? And he says, um, any of you need to go to the toilet before I start? <laughs> Yeah, um, so maybe you yeah. can uh, get him on our <laughs> podcast. Oh, awesome. absolutely! I will Yay. message him and say, Love it. Um, "Please, please come on on stage podcast with Chris because it would be it would be fantastic." Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Um, but uh, yes, and um, so are you from a musical artistic family? Yeah. So um, my mother's a singer, um, and in the sixties she. Uh, was a cabaret artist hmm. and uh, she was very fortunate to um, know a friend of the great Tom Jones and Tom, the Jones, Tom Jones the Tom Jones wow and to Tom Jones booked my mum to sing in one of his clubs in the early 60s and so she was a cabaret singer from that point because obviously if you're singing in uh, a club owned by Tom Jones that's a pretty good start I think as a cabaret artist nice in the 60s so she was doing that throughout the whole of the 60s and um she's got a lovely voice uh so she loves the music of julie andrews mm -hmm. and um i listened to um a lot of julie andrews when i was young and uh my mum loves julie andrews and leslie garrett uh, so those those are who her, her two favorite singers uh so um Yes, but she has that lovely sort of musical theatre voice, uh, but she's also got that classical quality to it as well. My mother loved Maria Callas and Edith mm. Piaf, and she listened to yeah. her voice all the time. And then you have favorites like, well, she's passed away now, well, all of them, but Marian Anderson. Opera yes. Star Marian Anderson, yeah. Yes, yes. Definitely. There's some really good sopranos, altos, mezzo sopranos, tenors. There's just so many of them. Michael Crawford is a good one too. Oh, Michael Crawford. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, very, very good actor as, as well. I mean, a fabulous <laughs> yeah, singer, but also a great actor. And I, I think, um, you know, anybody who's seen Michael Crawford, um, uh, you know, in Phantom, I, I would have loved to have seen him in Phantom. I, I've seen Phantom of the Opera, um, but I've never seen Michael, unfortunately, because I think I was a bit too young at the time. Um, I was in about six, I think, when he was performing the role. Um, but uh, he definitely inspired me to sing uh, The Phantom of the Opera. And uh, uh, again, that's something I do a lot. If someone asks me to sing The Phantom of the Opera, I definitely jump at the chance of doing it. I do I do The Phantom of the Opera online all the time. But many, of my, many of my Christine Denae, see, I bought the mask, mm. everything. Yes. I have to send you a picture of um, yeah. me. <laughs> Gallia. And, yeah, um, absolutely. I'd love to see yeah, it. There yeah. was, yeah, I'll send you one of the ones I did with a. Well, actually, okay. I put one on my channel. Mm. I mean, there's so many Christine Denae's I sang with, but um, basically, it's my favorite favorite number is mm. is um, "Think of Me, Think of Me, Angel of I Music." Love I love that song. Angel, I, 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 mm -hmm. go ahead. The Phantom of the Opera is my favorite musical, um, followed by Les Miserables. Um, to me, yes. those, those two musicals, they just, the songs are so emotional. They just connect with me uh, so, so much. And um, Think of Me is a beautiful song. 
Yeah, I, I've actually done a rendition of Think of Me, but I did post not only just a fan of the opera one, but I also um, I put um, Bring Him Home. Bring Him Home, one, yes. So many favorite. times. I love that one. Mm. So Fan of the Opera, Music of the Night is another one I like. Yes. Music All of the I Night. Ask of You is another one. Yes, lovely duet. And Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again. So about maybe a point of no return. That's my favorite. I should really post mm. a version I did of Point of No Return. People love my my Phantom. They actually love my Phantom. And when I do it on stage, I don't know. I enjoy just yeah. in the comfort of yeah. my own house, being able to it's stand great, in front of the yeah. camera. Everyone, I'm opening up and I'm singing Fan of the Opera. Anybody out there, Christine Denae, want to join me? And then people will just start singing duets with me. I Absolutely. end up like 10 to 15 duets. And, yeah. and then... <laughs> I'm like, wow, she's good, and she's not on stage. Why? <laughs> you know. Yeah. There's a lot of sing. I have to send you some. There's a lot of singers out there. Please right? do. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, yes. So, who's your inspiration? Um, well, I I suppose this goes back to when uh, when I was about ten years of age, and I first saw um, the great Pavarotti. Uh, when he was singing in uh, Rome. Do you remember the 1990 World Cup? Uh, Not too familiar, um, but I know who Vavarotti is. The three tenors, so Carreras, yes. um, Domingo and Pavarotti, yeah. did this fabulous concert. Um, but I think it was when I first heard Ness and Dorma, so that I think it got into the charts that year. It got very, very high. And that was the first time I think I'd heard a true piece of classical music mm. you know that was and i was just absolutely just blown away um i thought how could anyone sing something as high as that <laughs> um so i thought i uh, so i got listening to pavarotti uh uh but um i i i suppose when i realized i was never going to be pavarotti um i i, I suppose i started listening to all sorts of singers really so i, I think it was musical theater so musical theatre was where I started, and then I developed the voice from then on. So I didn't have a classical voice straight away. I had to I had to develop my voice. So I started on musical theatre. Um, so I listened to a lot of shows. So I listened to a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, I listened to Michael Ball. I listened to Michael Crawford. Michael uh, Ball. Sarah Brightman. Yes. Um, all Sarah. these musical all these musical no. theatre stars. Um, I still listen to. Um, so I think I got my inspiration from them. Yeah. Um, my inspiration would be from Josh Groban, of course, but I grew up with, uh, Luciana Pavarotti, the three tenors, mm -hmm. and then we have someone called the Canadian tenors. And yes. we actually had, uh, Ken Levine, who used to be part of the Canadian tenors. I was mm -hmm. interviewing him and, um, he's got a beautiful voice and he actually has a YouTube channel called, uh, like he does a reaction videos. He listens to yeah. others do um, the singing of tenor, sopranos, whatever, and he would react to their voice. So he's more like a vocal teacher as well. But yeah, he was part of the Canadian tenors. Um, so what was the first concert that you ever went to and who did you see perform? Um, I can tell you the first musical I ever went to, which was I was, uh, I was five years of age and I went to see Fiddler on the Roof in Manchester Arena. Nice one. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, at the time, my mum was performing in the show in uh, one of our theatres here in Cheltenham. Uh, sadly, no longer here. It's been knocked down for flats. Uh, but it was a lovely yeah. theatre. Um, but uh, that was the first musical I ever saw. And I, um, I'm, I'm hoping next year that I may be in it. So I'm going to be auditioning uh, for a part in Fiddler on the Roof next year. Will you be tri trivia? Tevia? Uh, probably not that role, no. <laughs> but it might That's be one of the role. other one of the other male roles I think I'd probably audition for. The original with T'Pol was really good because I think T'Pol was yeah. an opera singer as well. Kayem T'Pol. I remember his name. Kayem Yes. Tepal. Yes. Was good. Yeah. Really good. Hmm. Um, can you... Okay, I was going to ask you, can you describe your music? But we already know it's opera. But um... well, I, I suppose it's classical crossover, isn't it? I mean, yeah. 
uh, it's musical theatre. It's um, yeah, it's it, uh, so. I mean, I've got a classical voice, but of course, um, not everybody listens to classical music. So I think sometimes the classical crossover is a good is a good thing. Um, not everybody approves of it. Um, some people think, oh, you should just be doing straight classical singing. Um, so uh, I I do work with other musicians, and they say, oh, I don't know why you sing with backing tracks because they sound horrible. Uh, I don't I don't um, agree with that. Um, and I think you should try and take your music to the people rather than keep it all to yourself. Um, uh, so, so I don't go for this kind of niche thing of just singing to people who just appreciate classical music. I think you have to sing all sorts of music, musical theatre, pop, opera, everything, folk. And that's what I try and do um, because, I, because I think that you've got to have a broad, a broad range of music. You've got to have um, a, wide, a wide ranging audience and you need to be singing songs that everybody likes rather than just a niche group of people like. Um, so I suppose that, um, you know, over the years I've developed my voice to sing all sorts of things, but even though I'm a classical singer, I can sing pop and I can sing musical theatre. Um, so I think that's a good sting to my bow that I can do all different genres of music and different styles. So you could literally sing an Elton John song or a Billy yeah. Joel song if you want. Yeah, to. absolutely. Yeah. One of my no. favourite songs is, um, by Billy Joel is called, And So It Goes. Yes. My favourite too. In so every cool. heart there is a room, a sanctuary safe and strong. Oh my goodness, your voice is pristine, my friend. Yes, please. You should go on there and <laughs> sing some cover songs. There might be some songs you probably, like there's some songs yeah. I couldn't probably sing, but I do... I'm not going to edit this out. Okay, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I do sing Britney Spears, and my favorite one is um, God. So let me be the last to know. That's it. That's one. Yeah. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Don't let yeah, me be the last song. to know. I've I like actually... um, I like Stronger. I think it's a great pop song. Yeah, I love it. That's I love the song. energy. I love the energy behind it. Wow, I I like this guy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm so afraid to tell people that I actually like singing Britney Spears. And oh, here's no, another no. one, Madonna. Yes. Take a vow. It's my very one. Take a vow. Take a vow. Oh, okay. Yes. I sing that a yeah. lot, and I do the yeah. actual falsetto voice. Um, so it'd be like this. Um, say your lines, but do you feel them? Do you mean what you say when there's no one around watching you, watching me? One lonely star. Mm -hmm. There you go. My that's great. Too. Hard to sing. It's actually that last bit. That, that's <laughs> why I choose that song, because I think yeah. my voice is good for that one. Mm -hmm. um, I tried the other songs, and they just didn't do it for me. But, yeah, thank you very much. It's coming from you, that's... Uh... No, I love, I love all music, and I think that... Mm -hmm. um, you know, pop is just as important to me as classical. Um, and there's some, yeah, some fantastic. And I don't know if you watched our party at the palace uh, with our Jubilee celebrations here. Yeah, I, I did. You, what did you think? It was great, wasn't it? Pristine, yeah. yeah. But not that I want to get into controversy, but do you think Charles would make a good king? Or do you think <laughs> it should be passed down to William or what? Well, he lives just down the road from me in Highgrove. It's not. It's, it's only. Uh, it's only a few miles down the road from where I live. <laughs> wow. Um, so uh, yes, I've. Uh, yes, I know Highgrove very well. I've passed it. Um, I think I may even have actually um, sort of, sort of uh, uh, been, be, been sort of in the vicinity um, of Highgrove. Um, I was very fortunate, actually, to go to St. James's Palace when I was about 19 and meet the Duke of Edinburgh. And it, that, wow. was, that was an amazing day as well. Uh, to, yes. Yeah. But then you see this movie, The Queen, with Helen Mirren as the Queen, mm. finding out that the Queen yeah. actually drives her own car in the scene where her car gets kind of um, yeah. totaled or, or was in an accident some guy stranger just drove by and picked her up and yeah. up. I'm thinking, really the queen of england i love that film. i love that film the queen especially that moment when she sees the stag yeah 
and uh, she and it, 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 that beautiful scene when they're shooting in the Scottish Highlands, and she just sees that beautiful animal. Uh, it's such a memorable scene that um, it's what makes it for me that film. It's just that moment, just captures the beauty of um, of Scotland and the and the beauty of of, of life, as it were. Yeah. Like. Um. What is the one message that you would like to give to your fans? <laughs> uh, thank you very much to all the people who buy my music, who listen to my music, who support me, who um, you know absolutely get fed up with all my posts every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much, and I hope uh, I hope I hope to keep uh, to keep doing this um, for a lot longer yet. Uh, so I'm working on a new album at the moment, Chris. Nice. Yes, new album coming. Um, and I'm hoping next year so uh, to do a classical album called it's going to be called Songs of England, mm. and it's just it's going to be it's going to be a collection of English songs uh, from uh, from all different decades really. Um, probably not just classical. There might be some modern songs in there as well. Um, so yeah, I've got some ideas uh, uh, because I would like to keep doing recordings if I can because I know that I get. Uh, but, so I get a wider audience that way. Um, so with concerts, it's wonderful to perform in concerts. But I think with recordings, um, there there are people who can uh, who can hear you. Uh, perhaps wouldn't attend classical concerts. Who wouldn't be attending uh, Handel's Messiah or Mozart's Requiem? Uh, but they still like to hear you sing. Uh, so I think with recordings, that's a great way of uh, getting a wider audience so yes i want to keep on doing recordings do you live and breathe things so you were like everywhere you go or like in the restaurants and hello oh. waiter i want the pasta <laughs> pasta and then the waiters and service yeah. like, he wants I, pasta <laughs> i think I, I, I think if i did that i would probably get some strange looks from everybody <laughs> and might even get thrown out of the restaurant um uh yeah but of course there have been occasions where perhaps i had a perhaps perhaps a, a tipple or two and started singing in a pub uh that's uh and, and then my uh yeah people think what on earth's going on and i just burst into song um so yeah so when i'm drunk i'm very very happy i have to say uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um oh crikey oh i've probably done uh let me think well i was i think when i was back at university i think we went to a, a nightclub in kingston all of us i don't know what we were doing i think we've probably just been out on the razzle is that the word um just had a bit of a good time although i remember we we won a quiz we won a quiz and to celebrate we all went out to a nightclub and um, we all got very, very drunk. We we're only 18, 19. Um, and I remember us getting back on the bus and just singing songs all the way home. And those poor passengers, I don't know what they thought of us, really. Hmm. <laughs> well, we had a, a couple of Bella Duo um, who met during the pandemic. They were singing, yeah. they were singing servers and they both met and like they just started to sing and now they're mm -hmm. going all around and their rendition of the prayer was excellent my favorite one is the prayer i sing a lot of italian by the way oh. and, um, and, I sing all... <laughs> and uh i sing a couple of german songs mm -hmm. and maybe one or two french songs but i've learned these songs for years and they're just part of my repertoire but for me to sing a song like a dutch song it then Galvin Howe. It's a great song, and I'm half Dutch, but I don't even know the song. I have to learn it. But these German songs and French songs, I've known for years, and they're no problem. It's not like I just, you know, learned it last week, because it would be pretty hard for me to to start singing a totally different German song i never heard before. It would take yeah, I've, 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 I've sung quite a lot of Schubert, uh, Franz mm -hmm. Schubert, German leader, um, and I've sung French song, and I've mm -hmm. done um, Spanish, Italian. Um, so okay. I, I do enjoy singing different languages. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, certainly Lida. Lida is is very very beautiful. Uh, difficult, difficult to difficult to sing and learn. Um, but uh, there's, there's some lovely songs written by German composers like Schubert, Mendelssohn, Brahms. Um, lovely, lovely music. Uh, definitely music to 
to listen to um just just sit back and just just relax and listen to that uh german leader or french songs lovely yeah so do you create music for yourself or for your fans like it like when you sing are you singing for your fans Do you sing because you for the enjoyment of it oh definitely for the enjoyment i mean i wouldn't be doing it this if i didn't enjoy it but uh, it's 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 hard work as well uh so you know there's a lot of learning that goes into uh preparing for concerts and um uh, sometimes it, it can be uh you know you get sort of called to do something at the last minute and say do you know this piece? Do you know that piece? You have to say, yep, I know it. Uh, and then you just have to sort of rehearse it uh, for a few days and then go and do it. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, absolutely, I enjoy it. Absolutely. And um, I've met so many wonderful people too. It's just the friendships that you make and the camaraderie of the people that, um, you know, that they're not, uh, you know, they're, they're they're behind you as well you know they're supporting you they're not sort of people who, do, who don't want you to do well um everybody seems to support each other in this industry which is which is fantastic um and it's great it's great when you've got people like that who uh, who are so nice um because it, it it's tough as you know it's tough but we've just we've just got to keep doing what we love yeah you make like you mentioned before you make a lot of relationships you make a lot of friends um, you get people asking you to help me onto the podium, <laughs> you know. And oh, that's, that's never forget cool. that. Helping Sir Neville Mariner onto his rostrum. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> do you think your musical style has evolved since the beginning of your career? Uh, yeah. So, I, uh, as I say, I was a musical theatre singer. Uh, then, uh, when I went to London, I developed this opera voice. So, I sort of trained trained to be an opera singer. Uh, so. Yeah, definitely my voice has got stronger because of the opera training um, and uh, uh, because it's a different voice to a musical theatre singer. I think sometimes it's, it's um, uh, you know, it's probably got that sort of um, classical tone to it now, whereas it was quite thin and reedy, I think, before I started, you know, when I was in my teens, say. Uh, so I wanted to develop it. And, uh, you know, by the time I was 25, I was singing full-blown opera, so I was in... I was doing all all kinds of things, lots of operas, Marriage of Figaro, Don Giovanni. Um, so yeah, a lot of Mozart. I've done a lot of Mozart. I love Mozart operas um, because I've been asked to sing in them, so I've done them. Um, so probably not heavy opera. I haven't done a lot of uh, Verdi or Puccini really. Uh, I've done Rossini, uh, and I've done things like um, I've done Brahms and I've done um, Haydn. Um, yeah, I've there's no kind of like classical early romantic, I suppose you call it, um, sort of music. Um, but uh, yeah, so I yeah, I just I, I kind of just enjoy singing anything really. If someone asked me to sing, you know, someone came up to me and say, oh, "I'd love you to sing this for me in a concert," I'd probably say, "Yeah, I'll do it." Uh, you know, even if I probably didn't really know it, I'd learn it because if that person really wanted me to sing it, I'd learn it. I do it for that person. What about La Traviata, La Boheme? Ah, uh, Brindisi. Course. You're talking about Brindisi. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, oh, crikey. Um, yeah, I haven't actually been in La Traviata, unfortunately. Um, but uh, uh, I've, I've, I sort of done Leha, Merry Widow, things like this. Um, yeah, um, De Fry, uh, De Fry, uh, De Fledermaus, Strauss, okay. things like that. Yes, um, I've done all that sort of thing because it's kind of like light tenor. It's not too heavy. It's not kind of um, Pavarotti tenor. You know, you don't have to have a Pavarotti voice um, to do Lehar or um, Strauss or uh, or Gilbert and Sullivan, really. Um, so yeah, uh, I. Uh, yeah, I, I think it just it just depends really on on what people are looking for. I've done some Donizetti, um, um, Una Fativa Lagrima. Do you know that one? I'm not too familiar with that one. I don't think. Una Fativa Lagrima, negli occhi suoi scorso, wow. 
Free concert, everyone. <laughs> that was amazing. Wow. Um, you just blow me away, my friend. Oh, wow. It's a beautiful uh, song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how's your Val Jean? Uh, uh, bring him home. Yep. Lord on high, hear my prayer in my need. You have always been there. Yep, my Le Miserable um, Richter scale just went up to 11. And it, only goes, <laughs> it only goes up to 10, so you actually... Uh... <laughs> I've sung that song many, many times. It's a beautiful song, isn't it? It is a beautiful song. I just love singing. I love doing this online. I love um, meeting people. Yeah. I love just... And is there a particular song that you couldn't sing that you can sing now and, and how long did it take you to learn like how long does it take you to learn a song uh whoa crikey um so i've i've <laughs> i've just done a singing competition where i had to learn seven new songs uh that i didn't know previously um and they were quite difficult actually they were quite demanding songs some were opera some were english some were you know um uh god i'm trying to think now what i did sing um but they were quite demanding on my voice um so yes uh yeah I, I did quite a difficult number uh, i remember it's um it was a song by finzi so finzi was um uh english composer yeah um, finzi, yeah, yeah. you heard of finzi i've heard of him yeah yeah he wrote a beautiful song called the sigh and i had to sing this and yeah, it was I, yeah it was very well, moving I'm just trying yeah i have um my spotify of greatest uh, classical hits here um ludovico and nudi oh uh, yes and i know jenkins palladio mm. um where's that one by finzi i think it oh. was an english suite called frolic with charles hubert yeah. curry english yeah so that's the finzi one right that i have on here that's a beautiful, beautiful. Um, Carl Jenkins. I, you just yes. mentioned Carl Jenkins. I've sung, yeah. I've done the Arm Man about five times. Oh, nice. It's the most fantastic piece. Uh, just incredible. Wonderful thing to sing in. I got to do more research on these songs and try to um, get out of my uh, comfort zone because there's some mm. really fantastic oh, uh, yeah. songs, even that you mentioned that I just want to learn. And Italian is not. It's not too hard for me to pick up. It's just those rolling ahs, ahs. Very yeah, it's hard a lovely to... language to sing in. Um, I, I still don't know whether I'm singing it correctly. I mean, I just, I, I, I really kind of teach myself. Uh, you know, I, I, I can learn from other singers, and I do. I listen to lots of other singers. But I think predominantly you kind of just have to learn yourself how to do it uh, because the, your, your, an Englishman trying to sing like an Italian. So it's never going to sound completely uh, authentic, is it? You can give it your best shot. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> going to be Canadian who is trying to sing like <laughs> an Italian man. So that's yeah. different. Because I think the UK, the ones with the English, they have probably more of a grasp on the Italian than mm. a Canadian, mm. the sopranos or tenors, but I believe it can be done. Um, yeah, who do you think? Is there someone that you're like, oh, I aspire to be like them? Well, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd love to have a voice like Alfie, really. Alfie Bow, I think he's incredible. Alfie, who's that? Sorry, I... Alfie Bow. Never, I don't think I ever heard of them. Uh, no, he's a tenor from the UK. Okay. Very, very good. Alfie Bow, check him out. It's oh, I good. certainly will. Is that Bow, like B-O-W? B-O-E. B-O-E? I'll check him mm. out. Yeah, he has an amazing uh, background story because I think he was he was working uh, in Manchester as a mechanic um, for TVR. The, I, I think he was working as a TVR mechanic, a uh, sports car, uh, TVR. And then he went to, uh, I think, going to sing uh, for National Opera Studio in London. At one time, he was living on a park bench. 
uh, and it's kind of like a, a rags to riches story. And then oh, suddenly wow. he's uh, this this opera singer that everybody knows. <laughs> wow, that's mm. inspirational. That's yeah, amazing. It, it's amazing. Yeah, and he is amazing. And if you, I got to meet him. I went to one of his live um, concerts. So I've been to two of his concerts, and it was great to meet him. And he said, and uh, he, he's so laid back. And he said, oh, no, you, you're a tenor as well. I went, yeah, yeah yes, not as good as you. <laughs> That probably wasn't the right thing to say, but I was a bit starstruck, really. <laughs> Would you agree that it's very important to learn, study, and understand old music and music history? Uh, yes, I think it is. Um, I, th I think if you have a knowledge of composers, uh, the eras that they were um, working in, uh, so if you look at the Baroque, the classical era, the Romantic period, the modern period, um, you you gauge i think from the times they were writing um and what everything was going on in history at the time so if you look at um mozart when he was around that was when the french revolution was happening mm. um and i think if you look at tchaikovsky that was uh you know when the czar the russian the russian czar you know uh, all the it was a difficult difficult time for russians then you know, so there's, um, yeah, I, it's, uh, it's, I think it's good to know exactly what was going on in the world when they were writing their music, because then you can really understand how difficult it must have been for them to have all, because I think Berlioz, the French composer, there was always wars breaking out in France. So his music is very dramatic because there was probably a, a, a war happening whenever he wrote a, a, a piece of music. So his music was very warlike. <laughs> what social issues are you actually passionate about like how did the pandemic change you the the man you are now from the man you were before god the pandemic that was um uh, and it, I, I suppose it's still with us really because we yeah. we've been told here in the uk that the um the cases are going up again unfortunately um and i did get it i did get covid um it was a very unpleasant experience i lost my voice completely i was very very ill I thought one stage I, you know, I might not even make it. Um, it was a horrible, horrible time for me. Uh, I think just also the fact of not being able to to sing, you know, I find it I found it difficult to breathe, let alone sing. Um, horrible, horrible experience. So yeah, but got through it. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm glad that, to see you that you're okay and you can sing again. Obviously. Mm -hmm. I heard a little earlier that you could sing and I heard you sing. I couldn't I couldn't sing for five months. Five months. Five months. That must have been quite an emotional experience for you. Uh it was it was terrible. I mean, um yeah, I don't want to go through anything like that again. I don't think anybody else does, do they? I mean, it's it was an awful, awful thing to happen um for the whole world. And um I know people unfortunately, who died from COVID, people I knew, very good friends of mine who I'd known for a long time. Uh, it was a very emotional uh, time time for me, uh, for my family, um, and for everybody. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, so bad, all the people that have died. and No, I, you know, I just remember how, how hard it was, my fellow musicians, and how no one could sing. Um, mm -hmm. No one could had the opportunity to sing no one had the opportunity to do anything to be, do any sort of performance whatsoever and i think we were just all shut up in our homes and thinking when is this thing going to end um but uh, i think we are through the worst of it now which is which is thankful news and uh, you know the vaccines have uh, have helped tremendously and um i you know um they certainly they certainly helped me um, I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for the vaccines. That must have been scary for you for that five yeah. months you can sing. What did you do? Um, I think the, most, the worst part of it was when I felt that I could, you know, my my breathing stopped, as it were. You know, I felt I couldn't breathe. You know, it was like a choking. You know, it was a um, very, very scary moment because you suddenly find that you one day you're able to breathe and the next minute you're struggling for air. 
Um, and I think that um, being a singer, that is, you know, probably, yeah, it is, it, it is the worst thing that can possibly happen when you know you can't even breathe. Uh, so I think when I sort of was starting to get better, although it took a long time, the breathing came back, and but the singing took a lot longer. So it took probably five months before my actual singing voice came back. But I was just, I was just thankful I was able to breathe properly, you know. Yeah. And I, I, you know, and because that is, it's, it's very scary, you know. Um, people were saying it's a very scary moment when you realise you have COVID, that uh, you, the air goes from your lungs, and um, you know, and it really does. I mean, you, you're, you're choking. You cannot breathe. You know, it's really oh. horrible. Well, and every day is a gift now. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, yeah, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I hope. I hope we never ever have to go through anything like this again. Well, being a strong Christian and. Um... I, every time I get up in the morning, that's a blessing right there. Every time I open up my eyes, every time I, I'm, I'm independent, every time I just this world and just the things that are happening in current situations, it's sort of like it's a blessing. And every day it's yeah. like a gift. It's Absolutely. just amazing. Because, um, Chris, I know people who were fit and healthy and died from this awful virus. Um, there was nothing wrong with them. Uh, and that was a tremendous shock. Uh, you know that, that people who were healthy and fit just suddenly then had had the virus and didn't make it and didn't get through it. Oh, it's really scary. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, yeah, it's terrible. I'm so sorry about that. If you could have a musician tag along with you on tour for one month, who would you choose? Hmm. Um, Natalie Klein, the cellist. Uh, okay. I got to meet her when I was uh, a London student. I went to one of her recitals, and she's such a lovely person. She's a fantastic cellist. I mean, if you think of Jackie Dupre, Jacqueline Dupre, she's definitely in that league. But she's also such a lovely person as well. And, I, and it was great to meet her, and uh, we got on really, really well. So I think it'd be Natalie. Natalie, Natalie Klein. So she she won the Young Musician Klein. of the Year in 1994 nice. here in the UK. So she's, she's actually... Got, yeah, she's, she's gone on to be one of the world's greatest cellists. Natalie Klein. Natalie Klein. C-L-I-N-E? C-L... I think it's E-I-N, actually. C-L-E-I-N. Okay, I'll, I'll check her out. Yeah, she's great. Thanks for that info. She oh. plays and she's there's she plays with such emotion. I mean, when you watch her, you're you just melt looking at her because it's just it's it's like it's like seeing somebody who's just completely absorbed in the music. Klein, Nat oh. Natalie Klein. I have to figure out whether um, Natalie with an H or Natalie without the H. I guess I'll, I'll find her. I'll find her. Yeah, El Gas Cello Concerto. Have you okay. heard that? No. Listen to her performing that. It's fantastic. Okay. Um, what do you enjoy most about being a musician? Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, the music, I suppose. Learning, learning a song, a new song, or learning a, a new piece, a, a new piece of music, a choral work. Uh, I, I suppose it's. I think it's the um, the joy of of learning a song that you don't know, I think, and then going through that journey of discovering something that um, you didn't know before. And then once you have learned it, it becomes like a friend, isn't it? Um, it becomes, it becomes, yeah, that, that uh, yeah, it's just the joy of learning a song and just, uh, just, and, uh, and then performing it to an audience that appreciates it. Do you feel that performing it by yourself and practicing it and learning it, what kind of emotion goes, what kind of thoughts go through your mind when you're actually performing it? 
it's uh, I think it probably depends on the song. It probably depends okay. on the words. Um, I have been asked to sing at um, funerals. Oh. And that can be difficult. Yeah. So I had to sing once called a song called I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen, which is a very, it was a very, it's a very famous song. I think it was sung by tenor, Irish tenor, Joseph Locke. I've heard uh, of him, yes. He's yeah, so he used to sing this song. And I was asked to sing it because the lady who passed away was called Kathleen. Mm. And the family were all there. And it kind of got to the moment where everyone was waiting for me to stand up and sing this song. And it was very emotional to be singing this song to somebody who I didn't know called Kathleen, but singing, but singing I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen, and seeing the reaction of the family when I sang it. Because they were all in tears by the end. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but they said it was beautiful, and they said, thank you so much for singing that song. That meant the world to us. Um, so I think, I think it's, it's, it's moments like that that you think, you know, you've really brought uh, something um, to somebody. You know, you've brought, you've brought that emotion because uh, obviously it's a, it's, it's a difficult day for them as it is, but you've probably made it even more difficult by, you know, by singing something that, uh, uh, that, that they really, you know, was very important to that person very important to that person and you've you've just delivered it and they're happy so you sort of breathe a sigh of relief really that you didn't mess it up <laughs> i don't know if you yeah the, oh wow you don't want to do that <laughs> no you don't if they ever ask me to sing in a funeral i'm going to be going oh how do i do i that? had to sing um so i had to sing the nunc dimittis which was Again, a lovely piece of music. Um, but again, that was at a funeral for somebody. Um, and it's um it was a thing from Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. It was a pop it was a it was a TV oh, with program. Colin Firth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um oh. I that was another great piece I enjoyed singing. I don't I don't normally sing it, but I was asked to perform it for this particular funeral. And again, they said that was great. Thank you so much. So, you know. It's moments like that, I think, because it's again, it's 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 something that it's very important to that family. That that song was very important to them, and they wanted it sung. I didn't know it at all. I learnt it, and I managed to, you know, pull it off. <laughs> yeah, and they liked it. So I have a little bit of my like I inherited my father's voice. He wasn't an opera singer, but. He had an operatic voice, so he was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that I've inherited his voice. And I want to get out there and just, I want to do what you do, basically. Well, do maybe it. The, the funeral <laughs> thing is kind of like maybe on the bottom of the list, but yeah. Yeah, I want to do it and sing. Just, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's I, I prefer singing at weddings, I have to say. <laughs> it's a bit more of a, a joyous occasion. Um, you know, and uh, I've been fortunate to sing a number of weddings, and um, they're lovely. They're lovely occasions. So when the bride and the groom are signing the register, you're singing away, um, and uh, you know it's 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 lovely. Well, oh. back in the '80s, um, I was part of a group of men. We used to go up, um, go to old folks' home, and start singing to them. And that has its own little bit of a sorrow because many of them they don't have family coming to visit them or folks coming to talk to them and we just started singing to them that had its own sort of um thing and um and you feel kind of awkward charging singing at a funeral if, like if the ones that you sing the song kathleen for if they offered you money would it be kind of awkward for you to take it yeah so some funerals they have and some they haven't so i think and i you know it's nice if you get paid for singing at a funeral or wedding um but sometimes you're not but I think that you've got that contact with somebody. Um, so they may ask you to do something else. And, uh, you know, that may be something completely different. But, um, yeah, so, no, I, I haven't always been paid for everything I do. It's nice to get paid, obviously. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, I, I've been you know, lots of times where I've just done something for the pleasure of doing it as someone's asked me to do it. So, 
uh, village hall events and things like that. And, you know, um, you have to, uh, you, you have to enjoy what you do. You can't just, you know, you could, oh, I'm not doing that because you're not paying me. Um, I've never been like that. I've, I've, I've always, I've always tried to do everything to the best of my ability um, and enjoy what I do. And I think, and I think that that is what it's all about. Is that how you network as well? Like you have people maybe yeah. coming yeah, to a I wedding? Or... Yeah, I think, you know, I get asked to do all sorts of things. And I just, I just think that uh, it's great to be asked to have, to have the opportunity for one thing. Um, because as you know, it's quite competitive. There are lots of other singers um, around. So I think sometimes you might say, I, I might be a bit cheaper actually and perhaps some other singers <laughs> perhaps that's what i get i get asked more um because i'm cheaper to hire uh, <laughs> don't charge as much <laughs> your best performance oh my best performance crikey my most what my most you see, when you say your best performance, you mean the most memorable performance I've ever yeah. done? I would say it would have to be performing in My Fair Lady because mm. when I took on the role, I, I had not had a lot of experience um, uh, really um, performing for quite a number of years, shall we say. Um, so I was doing concerts and I was doing lots and lots of concerts but not doing stage work so it was going back to the theater and i'd had a lot of rejections beforehand years of, mm. you know you're not ready we don't want you for that role so i'd gone back and i was just doing my concerts so i think i was a bit nervous because i was back in the limelight as mm -hmm. it were i had to go back onto the stage and uh, sing uh, the the role of freddie which is which is quite a big role um and I think when I went on stage and performed on the street where you live to a full audience, full theatre, it's, it's an incredible experience. Um, and then to hear that, you know, you know, that wonderful applause after I'd sung the song. Uh, it's a great song to sing, as you know. Um, that was a great moment for me because I, I didn't think I was going to go back into the theatre because I'd, I'd had years and years of being rejected. And then mm. suddenly I was back there and I was getting the, I was getting that applause that I'd had 10 years previous. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I loved every single moment of playing that role. Um, I wanted to go around the country and do it. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I'd have to play the role all the time if I could. Um, especially when the director said, Ralph, that was great. It, that's one of the best wow. things I've ever seen. So, uh, you know, that was great. To, to, it, that was fantastic accolade, really, to hear that. Um, so, yeah, I think playing Freddy in My Fair Lady is absolutely a fantastic thing for anyone to do, for any tenor. Okay, well, I'll ask you this question. What is your worst performance? My worst performance. Oh, mm. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't just say it's my worst performance, but I have I have performed for um I think it was a company that I probably wouldn't perform with again, but uh, uh it was quite demanding really. I think we had to do um it was um it was a Buxton Opera House, I think it, Buxton Opera in Cumber um up in the Lake District. Um, and it was very demanding. I think I had seven costume changes. Seven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was tough. I remember performing, I, I remember changing my costume in the wings because I literally had like 30 seconds before I was next on, I was on stage again and I had a, the costume change had to be so quick. I had to have three ladies to help me. Um, <laughs> and it was touch and go. And there was one night where I didn't get on out there and it was this awkward silence and then suddenly i went da -da! <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine uh and i uh yeah and the director wasn't very happy and i got telling off uh at the end of the night um 
and he, he wasn't very nice to me. He used not very nice language, let's say. So when you're performing in front of an audience and they look bored, what do you do to energize them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, crikey. That's, that's, a, I, that's a very good question because um, I do actually sometimes feel that when I'm performing that there's people who just look absolutely bored stiff. And it's really hard. You've got to try, really try and engage with them. So if I see somebody who I think isn't really paying attention to me, I will really look at them <laughs> and probably avoid the people who are paying attention because I want to get everyone's attention. So I've, I've definitely had that before where somebody is just not, you know, just not paying attention to what I'm doing at all. It looks absolutely fed up. Um, yeah, that can be quite disconcerting. So I think you've, yeah, you've got to make them um, look at you in a way. So look at them, yeah, and try, try and get their attention. Then they might, they might look at you back if you're lucky. <laughs> like not doing what many of these uh, performers did and falling off the stage and stuff like that. Oh, I've done that. Oh, I've you done have. that. Oh, crikey. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's lots of misdemeanors that happen when you're on stage. I mean, God, I've, I've fallen into a swimming pool and got completely wet. Um, it, that was part of the act, I have to say. It was part of the opera. I had to, basically, I was playing playing this role in a Gilbert Southern opera, and I had to fall off the back and land and land in a pond. Oh, but it wow. was a swimming pool, obviously, of like a small paddling pool. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I had I, I basically sort of fell backwards. Um, and I just thought, I just hope I land on something soft. And I just landed in this paddling pool. Wow, Ralph, you've been, like, you've... I just came out completely soaked. Yeah. <laughs> and then had to do this sword fight. Wow, I, I can't believe I'm interviewing someone from Dad's Army. <laughs> uh, but it's really interesting you say that, Chris, because I have played the role of Pike. Oh, okay. <laughs> On nice. stage. That's awesome, yeah. Yes, I played the role of Pike. So the scene where he's up the ladder and it's um, he's singing, Whistle while you work. Hitler is at work. He's up army, so is his army. Whistle. <laughs> Your name also God's list. <laughs> Don't tell it, Pike. Oh, that one. That's uh, amazing. I have done that role, yes. Great role to do. And I've also, I, I don't know if you know the Vicar of Dibley. Do you know that thing? Oh, Vicar yes, of Vicar of Dibley, yeah. So I, I played Hugo from the Vicar of Dibley. So I don't know whether or not I'm stereotyped to play these, you know, uh, to play these roles. You know, they're just looking for the village idiot. And then I turn up to the audition. Yeah, I think you could do that. Uh... Well, <laughs> it's an honor to play a village idiot because look at Mike oh. Crawford. He played um, on uh, Some Mothers Who Have Them. And, and like, uh, I had no idea. Come. Like he sounded yeah. like this, and say Pate, Pate, I, and then suddenly I, you find him singing opera, and I'm like, I've, what? Just, I've just seen some mothers do have them at the yeah. uh, at the Everyman Theatre. I went on Friday night, and Joe Pasquale was was playing the role of Frank Spencer, and he is <sighs> absolutely brilliant. Oh my goodness! Wow, he was. It was a fantastic cast. Um, it's, um, I think it was written by a guy called Guy Husband. So he's sort of, he's a big fan of some mothers do have them, wow. but he's created this, this play with all sort of the, because it's, you know, all the uh, iconic lines from the show and created this new show to go on the stage. And, uh, Joe, Joe Pasquale is fantastic in the role. He's so funny. Yeah. But he doesn't go over the top with it. So he keeps it. So. It, uh, I think there's a danger with Frank Spence. You could, you know, you could push it, and 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 it could be too much. And he doesn't. He 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 just does it. He just does it right. And he's got all the mannerisms that Michael Crawford had. So he's obviously studied Michael Crawford very very closely. But he's made it his own. You know, he doesn't. He's not exactly copying him, but he he's but he's definitely got all the mannerisms that Michael Crawford had. That was my favorite. That, that was my favorite show next to On the Buses. But uh, yeah. I love that one. <laughs> Pate, fry, yeah. Pate. And then suddenly I'm watching this little thing of Fan of the Opera, and I'm like, wait a minute, is yeah. that is that Frank from? Um... And I find out he's a singer. I said, Michael oh, Crawford's yeah. a singer. This guy is actually a serious person, you know. And you don't see that, and then you realize he's just 
I haven't laughed so much in ages. I mean, it was it yeah. was thoroughly entertaining. It was so funny, and the pyrotechnics, brilliant. Things were blowing up. You know, there was there was lots of smoke and lots of lots of noises and lots of seventies music. They had a lot of seventies um, songs as well. So you could like tapping along to Tiger Feet and things like that. Uh, <laughs> great, really good show. I hope you get yeah. to see it. Because it's it's I I think they're taking it all around the UK at the moment, but um oh yeah I don't know. We might we be coming have, to Canada. We ha yeah, we have the BBC channel. Actually, I, I grew up with on the buses, some uh, others do have them. Um are That's you being army. served? Are you being served? Oh yeah, yes. we watched with uh yeah, it's amazing. Like um yeah. We we got we got a lot of the uh English, um, oh, oh, and um, Hercule Perot, we got a lot of them as well. Yep, yep. A lot of those shows. Um, what are your plans for the coming months? So I'm doing a variety show, actually. Um, I've been doing this for six months, and uh, it's going to be very exciting. Uh, it includes lots of different things. So I'm in a Eurovision Song Contest. Um, I mean, as I'm doing Bucks Fizz, making your mind up. Um, <laughs> I'm doing Johnny Logan's What's Another Year. I'm doing Congratulations by Cliff Richard. See, I told you I'm versatile, Chris. Yeah. You know. Um, so, I, I, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be great. There's all sorts of different songs that are going to be in the show. I'm thinking I'm doing We'll Gather Lilacs by Ivan Novello. Um, another beautiful song. Um, hmm. Yeah, lots. It's a variety show. There's lots of different things, so it should be fun. Uh, yeah. Woody from Toy. Story. I'm doing Toy Story. I'm playing Woody from Toy Story. Seriously, you got a friend in me. I'm singing that. <laughs> nice. So you really can sing everything. I, I, if someone asks me to do something, I think I can do it. Then I'll give it. I'll give it my best shot. What about commercial song jingles like? A slinky, a slinky, it's a wonderful <laughs> toy. A slinky, a slinky. Imagine singing an opera. People will be like, wow, can you sing the Flintstones in the opera as well? <laughs> you know, you want to be like somber and, and just sing this song, you know, and and go up to the people. And I've, had to, I've had to sing for members of my family as well who've passed away, and that's been very yeah. difficult. Oh, um, okay. um, so, you know, when you get asked to sing for your grandmother or grandma uh so uh yeah. my grandmother loved uh, the song i'll walk beside you that one do you know that one i'll walk beside you through the world today while dreams and songs and sunshine bless your way that sounds like that song i'll walk with god <laughs> from similar. this that one very similar so That's I had to sing idea. that, and that was very emotional. And then at my grandfather's funeral, you know, I had to sing Danny Boy. Oh, I like that one. And John McDermott says it sings a really mm -hmm. good version of that one. Yeah, that was uh, that was very emotional for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loses some. It's just a terrible thing. Like, I lost my dad 20 years ago, my mom 30 years ago. And you never really get over it. You just live through it. But there's always yeah, I, an I lost my father at an early age, hmm. um, and it was, I know, it was, the, it was very difficult for my, for my mother um, to just bring me up on her own, uh, and um, she's, she's wonderful because, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't grow up with a father in my early years. It probably explains the shyness, I think. I was very shy and I think it was only acting and singing that got me um, to a better place. And she definitely encouraged that. Well, there's that song, remember, Empty Chairs, Empty Tables. And mm. that's a thing every sort of when you go family, Christmas, whatever, there's always an empty chair where your dad or your mom sits. So empty chairs, empty tables. And it's like, whoa. Mm. Oh, here's a good one. What is the saddest song you've ever heard? Bring him home. Yeah. 
Mm. I went to see uh, Con Wilkinson uh, perform the role. I like him. Yes, I like I was him. On, I was in tears after he'd sung Bring Him Home. I was He's in bits. It was yeah. apps. It was the most emotional experiences I've ever witnessed. It was incredible. Yeah. And the whole the whole theatre was in floods of tears after he'd sung it. It's incredible. It was incredible. It's amazing. Yeah. He's got an amazing voice. I remember hearing when I was very very young. My mum had a record of Con Wilkinson's greatest hits, and I was talking about Pavarotti, but definitely Con Wilkinson was a huge influence on me. Massive, massive influence on me. He's really good. He's a great Valjean, actually. He's a very good oh, Valjean. He's an incredible voice. Um, I'm getting goosebumps because just the word Con Wilkinson uh, just just fills me with uh, just awe, absolute awe. I'd love to meet him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what are your interests outside of music? Ah, sailing. Okay. Yes, I, um, I learned to sail about 15 years ago. Um, I went uh, down to Weymouth on the south coast of England and learned mm. to sail. Um, and now I sail uh, around the south coast, the Isle of Wight uh, particularly. Uh, I'm in a sailing club. And um, I think it's a great relaxation. It's complete. It's nothing to do with music. It's nothing to do with singing. It's it's a completely different, separate hobby altogether. Um, and I love it. It's fantastic being out on a boat on the open sea. Um, it's an amazing experience. It's hard work, um, but it's great fun. Okay. So thank you very much again for inviting me. You're very welcome. Thank you, everyone. Let's wave. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye.